。啊啊啊。OK， I think we're live. Hello， hello everybody， welcome back to another KPC live. It's March nineteenth. 11 a.m. 11:06. I'm sorry for being a little late. The rain、uh, delayed me a little bit, and then I went to the convenience store because I remembered about my promise to bring an apple to buy an apple because of your donations last time. Thank you again. Shout out to、um, a lot of people. <laughs> I can't remember, but、uh, yeah, I will definitely buy apples for the next one. But、um, yeah, they didn't sell in the convenience store. They were all out. They only had bananas today. But I'll try to drop by the supermarket next time. But anyways, yes,、um, yes. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hello, David is here. Yes, I am. Let me just try to get this chat up so that I can, you guys can see your chats.、Um, yeah. Okay, David is here as well. And、uh, Chunami, thank you for the five membership gifts. Wow, so generous! Thank you so much. What a way to start the stream. What's Aaron? Hello, hello. And you can see that the background is pretty bland now because I've finished try, like migrating my stuff to the new studio, so it might look a little bit shimshime. That's the word of today. Shimshime means、um, you're bored, bland, basic. Stuff like that, yeah. I don't know why, but like so suddenly, in the recent years, I've never had this realization. But the word basic has become a totally different word. You know, like basic used to mean like just standard, normal,、um, okay, just the norm, that kind of stuff. But suddenly, people started using it as like a negative way. Like, oh, that's so basic. That's、um, It has no characteristic, no personality. That's so like bland and stuff. Yeah, something I just realized. I like the word basic, but I don't know why the word just changed like that. Hello, Genshin. Ah,、uh, uh, Tamian received the、uh, membership from Chenami. Yes, Harleen. Hello, Nicole. Hello, Rain. Hello. <laughs> Speaking of, it's raining outside in Seoul. Yeah, that caught me a bit. In the traffic, I drove. I drove today here because、uh, I need my car to just.、Uh, all I have remaining in this studio is the big desk, the computer desktop, the speakers, some of my little, you know,、uh, doodling stuff, and that's about it. So I need to just、uh, finish moving this, and that should be it. Yeah, and then fully migrated to the new studio. I really just want to do a big reveal of the new studio, but unfortunately. It has been unsatisfying, unsatisfactory, unsatisfying for me、um, because I initially wanted to make like a very cozy space with like big sofas and stuff. So I did get sofas. I got it out off the secondhand market, oh, basically for free. Took a lot of time and effort and work to move that to the studio with the help of my friends. But after placing it, it just It just seemed like it took too much space up, and、um, it was too bulky. And then, like, I have a big enough space, but I felt like the sofas were just, you know, I wanted to use the space as a multi-purpose、uh, space, at least two angles for two different kind of、uh, moods for podcasts and videos. But the sofas just were in the way, and there was only one angle that I could get out、uh, because of the sofas. So I'm thinking of removing the sofas and then replacing them to just you know like little armchairs or little、uh, you know little chairs,、uh, single ones, so that、um, I could like move them around more easily. The sofas are very heavy, so I don't think I'll be able to like move them around by myself, preparing for other kind of content. But anyways, yeah, that's about the new studio. I'm really just excited to、um, well furnish it.、Uh, Yeah, like I never like before this, I never knew that furniture and interior was this expensive. I, I was naive because I, never in my life have I ever dealt with furniture or、uh, furbishing my house or anything.、Um, 
yeah, but I just realized, wow, furniture is hella expensive, you know. So I've been going to a lot of like cafes, uh, restaurants, and studios nowadays to look at the mood, tone, and manner, and you know, just try to adopt that to my new studio. But the thing is, whenever I see something that's really nice looking, um, it's super, super expensive. It turns out to be like one ch per chair, it's like $400 or something like that. And I'm not even talking about like high end brands, it's IKEA. So there's this chair, I went to a cafe recently yesterday, if you check my Instagram story, um, and there were like yellow and blue red chairs that kind of felt like it uh, matches the theme of KPC. So I looked it up on uh, uh, the the Samsung lens or something the Google lens and wow the accuracy was really nice but then when I saw the price it was like 39 won per chair so that's like 350 per chair and it was an IKEA chair also there was like a nice little armchair that went all the way up to my head and then I could like lean on it and that one was like even more expensive so I was like what how is it furniture so freaking expensive and I think IKEA is not on like that high-end um, category, is it? Yeah, but anyways, uh, newly opening my eye to a new kind of thing in this age. Yeah. Yes, uh, I have no chance uh, other, to, uh, other than streaming in my next uh, new studio by next week because I need to empty this place by tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, real furniture is mad expensive. It's crazy, I never knew this. It's a new thing for me. So I'm like, this is way out of my budget. <laughs> I, I barely got uh, everything in my budget because I got it from the secondhand market and I got like massive sofas for only 20 bucks because people literally need to pay to get rid of them. So they're like happily just uploading it on Tangan Market and they're just like, oh, anybody can get it. You know, just get rid of it for me, please. And then uh, during our moving day when uh, we were moving all the shelves and the, the other objects and stuff, uh, I, I took a detour, took a stop to like one of the places and put it on the truck and then came uh, together. But yeah, that became a mess now. IKEA used to be affordable, was it? <laughs> I think the good thing about IKEA is definitely that you can, you are able to just combine the stuff itself and it comes in like a, you know, uh, not such a bulky manner. Like you, it comes like de dissected. So you can like all combine it yourself in a little box. So it's easy to like transfer, transfer and um, deliver. But, oh, wow, I didn't know Ikea was that expensive either. Yeah, I just went, the only reason I went to Ikea, like it or not, was just to go eye shopping. And even then, I didn't have anything in mind to actually buy or purchase because I didn't have, like, a house. Like, my house currently, I'm living with my grandma, so I, I didn't have, like, the freedom to actually uh, do the furniture myself. But now that I have a studio and I'm looking at in a different lens, it's like, wow, that it's so expensive. You know? And, oh yeah, the only reason I went to Ikea was to eat the meatballs and the uh, fish filet and all that. <laughs> for real, for real. Ikea is like a dating place in Korea. And this this camera is also malfunctioning again. Like my face is yellow. Yeah, it's because I'm Asian. <laughs> Hello everyone, Gamma. If you're new, welcome, welcome. Yeah, twenty dollar sofas in the U.S. That's be full of critters. No, they're really, really nice and new. I I checked everything. Yeah. Hello everyone, Kenchana. Yep. 
I just joined What Happened with IKEA. No, I was just explaining that I was like moving all my stuff to my new studio and then I'm furnishing uh, and, and the furniture over there is like actually really nice but then it kind of took too much space so I, w I decided to get like single chairs but then th uh, like those chairs that themselves were like $350 from IKEA and I can't believe the price of furniture is so high. Yeah. Dating at IKEA, exactly, I, I'm telling you, Korean people date at IKEA. Like, this is not an exaggeration. I've gone on dates on IKEA for several times, and it's just like, you know, you, it, IKEA isn't located within Seoul because, like, the land is just too expensive here. So they're the, the IKEAs are usually out, on the outskirts of Seoul. You need to probably take, like, 40-minute drives to an IKEA. Uh, it's in Gwangmyeong, there's one in uh, Goyang, so they're like uh, on the belt of uh, the Gyeonggi province. And uh, if you go there, there are a lot of like families, couples, and they're just all strolling there because um, it's, you know, it's an indoor place. It's like fun to look at furniture. Uh, there's like, I think 50%, this is just my, th this is all my own personal opinion, but I think 50% of the people there are not actually to buy furniture, but they're actually just eye shopping plus going to the food court for the, 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 the food. Yeah. Ikea is literally like a dining place for me. <laughs> now Costco, you actually go to buy stuff because Costco is like, it's, it's directly li related to your livelihood you know like it's food that goes on your plate it's like actual stuff you need whereas furniture is like a one-off thing you know it's only when you move in somewhere or you just want to add a little bit of deco to your place uh, but Costco is also very cost-effective because it sells in bulk so it's cheaper than the local markets for sure um, so yeah a lot of like restaurant owners or uh, food uh, businesses, you know, they go to Costco to just get all the Coke or like the uh, um, the beef or whatever uh, in bulk, yeah, in boxes. So they buy like five boxes at once and then you have like the membership card, which you have to pay, but it still, you know, pays off because you get more discounts than the membership itself. So I think Costco, it's, its model is genius actually, like whoever thought of that. But that's an, old, that's an idea only the Americans could pull off, like the land of excess. Like who could think of like a gigantic ass warehouse place um, selling in boxes and you know, crates and have like iron frames up to like the ceiling and uh, trucks literally just pulling them off and yeah. That's crazy, yeah. Ikea's, uh, Ikea, both Ikea and Costco is relatively new to Korea, I would say. They've only been around for, actually, have they been around for a while? Like, it just feels a little bit like, you know, not, still not, like, widespread. It's, I think, max it would have been 10 years, yeah. And there's still not that much. There's one in Busan, I think, I think, like, three or four in around Seoul, yeah. Uh, do people buy used furniture? Yes, so we have uh, places called uh, re refurb uh, places, uh, and they're like warehouses where people just you know buy secondhand stuff. You buy smoked salmon at IKEA, exactly. Yeah, the salmon and the pastries and the beef and everything that's like you know meat ish is it's really cheap and fresh in IKEA. That's really good. Oh, 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 wait, wait, you t you're talking about Ikea. Oh, great, right, right, right. Salmon, yes, in Ikea. I, I mentioned that before. David Carlson, thank you for the $10 PayPal pizza pizza from one of Anna's Bananas, but also a big KPC fan. Welcome, Anna Bananas. I'm taking on her stream now. So uh, I, I, commuted, I communicated with Anna today, uh, last night, so... Maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's not. Um, last night I texted her at 1.30 a.m. And I was like, are we doing a live tomorrow? I mean, today, I guess you're sleeping, but I'm going to do one anyways at 10 a.m. So if you're down, see you at home day. 
And then uh, afterwards, I was like, oh, and then that was like 1.30. And then I, I didn't sleep until like 4 a.m. because I was busy doing stuff like work, of course. And then I was like, yeah, let's make it 11, by the way, if you can. And then uh, she woke up at 8.30 a.m. And she was like, I'll make it for 11. Gave me a thumbs up. And then afterwards, in like five minutes, she was like, second thought, I just woke up and saw my face. And then she, she thinks it's super bloated and stuff. So she'll do a live later this week. So uh, that didn't happen. But Anna Bananas, sorry, you can't see Anna here. But uh, she'll be in the new studio. So that would be a nice surprise, right? And, uh, yes, another PayPal. Thank you, Kelly, for the 50. Oh, I'm sorry I couldn't bring the apple. As I said in the beginning, like, I was on a rush. I, 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 went, to a I went to stop at the convenience store, but they didn't have the apples. They usually have, like, packaged single apples for uh, people who live alone in the area, but I guess everybody just took them. Um, dis despite being expensive, like I checked the price and it was indeed four to five dollars per apple. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much. Won't buy a chair, but maybe some apples. So happy to have the six month sub badge. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Six months. Wow. I go to Costco just for the pizza. Not gonna lie. Exactly. I relate to you. You're you're exactly the same as me i like to get the meatball and jams from ikea exactly you guys know where it's at see like us commoners <laughs> us peasants i'm sorry for calling you peasants but like people who don't have that much money or things to do business in ikea literally go there just to eat and date you know? uh, four thousand one apple no it was five thousand one apple yeah Actually, I was at the supermarket like the day before and I was looking at the apple prices because like you guys trigger my curiosity. And this was something I literally took. And um, yeah, this was Lotte Mart. And look at this, this is like one single apple. It says 5,991, that's basically 6,001. So the dollar currency to one, that would be like five, 4.5 to five dollars something like that and then you have the bundle over here and they're like in a package this is i think a better deal but um i think there's maybe like four to five inside there and it's like fifteen thousand nine hundred twenty one so that's like um fourteen dollars thirteen dollars yeah <laughs> that's crazy right you guys said a kilo is like three dollars in the states but uh, yes, I will get an apple for sure uh, for the next live stream, yeah. The food at Ikea is so good, yes. People know, yeah. Do you like Granny Smith apples? I don't know what Granny Smith apples are. Is it a person called S Granny Smith? Yeah. Organic? Um, no, they, if it's organic, they usually say Yuginong in front of it. And uh, this one doesn't, so yeah, I don't think it's organic. Yeah, probably a lot of uh, what do you call it? The 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 pest uh, the pesticides. Yeah, always wash your apples. Why is fruit so expensive? I have no idea. I have no idea at all. And another PayPal for. From Tuan, here's for another apple pizza, ten dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Everybody's see. I think apples are the cheat key. Whoever starts a stream in Korea, I will give this advice. I do a lot of like lectures for uh, people who want to do like Korean related content nowadays. So I did one last week for the uh, cultural uh, center of Nigeria, uh, and. Yeah, they were really satisfied with my lecture. Thank you so much. But um, I should have included in my PowerPoint that mention fruits are expensive and that you want to eat fruits on a stream so that people can send you literally money to buy apples. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so... Green sour apples are granny sick. Oh, the green ones. I love the green ones, but I haven't seen them in Korea. No, literally. 
But I know there's like yellow apples too, golden ones, and uh, yeah, but the green ones, oh, I love them, the sour taste. I love sour flavors, yes. Korea has the most expensive apples in the world, really? What? What? For real? I need to make a reels about this or make a podcast about this. Why are fruits so expensive? I need to get an expert in apples or like farming. Oh, that would be dope. That would be actually dope. Like an actual agricultural expert who speaks some kind of English and then invite him or her to the pod and then ask him directly, why do you think apples are so expensive? Where does the cost get driven up? Is it like the distribution is it like the pesticides is it like the land or i don't know the, the the climate or whatever yeah but from what i know like i know that agricultural uh things like produce in america or like other people uh, other places like europe are relatively just cheaper in general because first of all the land mass is enormous they have plains and also Planes as in like the the Terran, but also they have literal airplanes and like small airplanes that sprinkle like the the seeds and also the fertilizer and the pesticides and everything. And that's just mind blowing if you think about it. That's how it's so cost effective. Yeah, it's like it's like a produce factory if you think. You bought a bag of apple for five dollars, and I know that. Um, yeah, no, actually. You live in an expensive area, so uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. That's a pretty nice deal. Our apples are usually small, though. Like, still, like even if an apple is a, are big or not, I think like once you bite like through it, you know, like how you go in, around like in a circle. I don't think it would be that much different if there's a big apple or a small apple. Yeah. Maybe it's because I don't like eat the apple to like the root and just yeah I, I just just bite like one or two bites and then go around it and then usually there's like the uh, the seed part the roots or whatever left the top and bottom I don't really like devour it up to the level of like make it a skeleton or something yeah I'm I'm so. It's so funny that I've been talking for about apples for 22 minutes. So my pledge today to myself was I, I got a message from someone and uh, the, the gist of the, the message was like, I enjoy your live streams, blah, blah, blah. The last one was about like two, two hours plus. So I couldn't, I couldn't like attempt to even start watching it because uh, he, he or she knew that uh, they they would have to like spend two hours of watching my stream. Well, pro tip, if you put it in 2x, I speak pretty slowly. I stutter a lot. So if you put it on 2x when you're re-watching, like it's way better. Uh, it's going to be in an hour and you can skip through the boring parts. So that's a pro tip. I don't know. Like I, I think, doesn't everybody use 2x on YouTube? Is it just me? Because I watch everything on 2x like literally except music videos or music i watch literally every single thing on 2x i don't have even the patience to watch through uh, a 15 minute video so i just like if it's a talking head video i just t uh, click on the chat gpt um plugin and then it just summarizes it for me sometimes if it's a podcast uh, i use the generate chapters function there's a plugin for that as well where i generate my my chapters and then i just copy paste the link put it in the chapters and then it gives me like you know the topics for each segment and i just like jump there uh, and get the time codes but anyways like pro tip <laughs> make it 2x when you're listening to my streams and that'll make your life way more faster and easier and more entertaining as well uh, so I might as well try to speak very fast so that you can't understand what I'm saying. And this is probably the fastest I can speak in English because my mind is constantly processing what I have to say in my head. It's constantly translating from Korean to English, so I might jam in the middle, but oh wow, that's like probably the fastest I've spoken ever in my life. Yeah, uh, I will never be able to uh, rap in English. Yeah, the only rap I can 
do in English is Eminem's uh, Lose Yourself, which everybody in the world can because it's such an iconic song. Um, anyways, where, where was I getting to? Like, this went down a total different way. Um, I was talking about something, then I just lost it in the stream of consciousness. Uh, yeah, but... Oh, yeah, I was trying to keep this stream very short because, like, some people were tr uh, feeling pressure towards the length of the stream. Um, but then I was like, okay, let's just do a friendly live stream today because, like, I've already covered the news on uh, two days before on a, on a different stream, and Anna's not here anyway. So let's just gather some questions on Instagram and Discord and just answer them and uh, make it like within 40 minutes or an hour but I think I failed totally because it's already like 30 minutes and the only thing I've been talking about so far is Ikea and apples so <laughs> I don't even have a have a, uh, a, a, a title for this stream it's KPC live March 19th right now and if I had to put a title or like the auto-generated chapters were made they would probably state Ikea and apples. Yeah, and then nobody would watch it afterwards like, what the? <laughs> Sometime 2x in movie, but YouTube never really. You guys have a lot of patience. You have to slow down on Korean show so I have time to read the subs. Oh, I guess you are like going back and forth in subs, yeah. I think using 2x is a bit too much unless you speak incredibly slow. Yeah, maybe I'll try to speak slower <laughs> so that you can, you're forced to watch 2x, but that would be uh, inefficient because then the, the, dur the duration of the video would uh, get even longer. I watch all my BTS videos at 75%. Really? Oh my god. Uh, Low, I, 10 minutes, 15, 20, 30, one hour, two hour, I watch the videos I'm interested in. Oh, that's actually correct. Yeah, no, no matter what, you know, like no matter how long the video is, if you're just interested in the person, the topic and the content itself, then yeah, like the duration doesn't really matter. And I feel really blessed because like I have an audience like you guys that are really just interested in the Korean content and c culture in general and also uh, it seems like you, you know, you like my company as well. So I like that. As, I like your company too. So it's like a, a nice, um, uh, what do you call it? A symbiotic. Is symbiotic like a harmful thing, or is there a? I think I think there was a good word for uh, a similar thing as symbiotic. But anyways, a relationship like that. Um, you were you was. You were up last night watching a three-hour marathon? Now, I think you have a niche going on over there. I think nobody actually watches a three-hour marathon of people just literally running. There's not even that much going on in a marathon. Like, people don't even excel other runners that much. Like, if, it's, if it was an F1 <laughs> racing, <laughs> but uh, marathons, yeah, you have your own little thing going there. Really? You like stuff longer? Oh, if Anna was here, she would have probably said I, uh, that's what she said. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. My dirty mind. Uh, we need an Apple icon as a membership. That's an actually great idea. Great, great idea. I will, I will actually add that, but it goes... It goes outside of the, uh, the the theme because right now my memberships, if you notice, the beginners are like a slice of cheese. It begins, it becomes like a tomato. I think it's a tomato slice of cheese. You combine that, it becomes like a slice, and like there's pepperoni on top after that, and there's like golden pizza or whatever rainbow pizza. But then the final, the final stage is apple. <laughs> yeah. I love your long videos. I look forward to them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Long format is nice. I know, right? Nobody does long format nowadays. I think I found a whole new world <laughs> here. Uh, because on YouTube, I haven't seen anybody do long form nowadays. Everybody's just focusing on shorts. And you know what the people say. Like, of course, you need to ride the trend, but 
um, always try to do what other people don't do. Like, try to differentiate yourself. And in terms of format, I guess I'm doing right. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just like so blessed to have you guys that literally watch my long form videos, like live streams. Because who does that nowadays? You know, like everybody's just so stimulated with dopamine and they can't watch through a video that's more than a minute long. They just scroll, 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 scroll. But like I somehow have an audience of more than like 160 people right now concurrently watching me just chatter on for an hour. Yeah, it's officially been 30 minutes now and I've only spoken about apples. Yeah. Apple pizza is the top tier. Oh, Apple is top tier because it's expensive. Yes. Apple Ajushi. That that's a, that's a, that's actually a nice name for like a YouTube channel. I think I'll if I make a sub channel, I will definitely use that. Can I can I like coin that or like can I uh, trademark that? Yeah, I'll steal it from Apple Ajushi. That's actually pretty nice. Oh, Apple Ajushi. I really like that. Or maybe I can make uh, like a Apple Korea uh, Korean Apple Club. So it's like the, you know, like how Sean, Sean Solo, like he's been, been on my um, pod for a couple times. And you know how his fandom name is the One Percenters? It's like, you know, it looks uh, classy because we're all the One Percenters. Now we can call ourselves Korean Apples because they're like literally the most expensive stuff in the world. <laughs> That's so fun. Opa, not Ajushi, Apple Opa. <laughs> Apple Opa. <laughs> That sounds so cringe though, Apple Opa. <laughs> and then people will think I'm like the Japanese pine pet by an apple apple fan that guy. Oh this this stream is just going to weird places today. Oh that, I don't know why I'm having such a laugh. But Apple Opa, Apple Ajushi. A O A. Apple Opa Ajushi. Oh, I love it. A O A. Oh, okay, A O A. I'm I'm gonna overtake the uh previous AOA um, girl group, SEO, yeah, because that's, that's funny because, you know, my, my biggest uh, stress factor when I was doing DKDKTV, it, it wasn't like the biggest, it was like a pet peeve, but when I was doing it, every time I search myself on YouTube, not because I'm like self-conscious or anything, I don't want to check myself out, but it's just like, I, I want to look at the comments and sometimes I'm not logged in and stuff. I, I type in DKDK and then never type the TV because, you know, it's just like, it's, it, I'm lazy. Like, DKDK, like, the YouTube is probably going to recommend one of my videos. So I just type in DKDK. But the biggest pet peeve was like, uh, there was a group called Promise 9. Pro was it Promise 9? Or there was another group that had a song called DKDK. And it means dugun dugun. Dugun dugun is like pit pat. Um, so it's a song about love and you know, you know, all those feelings. And then every time the SEO, the YouTube algorithm would push DKDK, the, the from Promise Nine up to the top. And I was like, ah, oh, why did they have to hijack our channel's name? You know, because of them, nobody, uh, nobody's gonna find us at the top. And you know how discovery rate is so ex important in like these YouTube social media things, right? So we had a big disadvantage and there was like DKDK music video, DKDK performance, and then DKDK, DKDK cover, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but then eventually because of our subscriber number and like a lot of views, we were mixed in between. And right now, even now, if you type in KPC, there's like this Korean proficiency center or something that's like hijacking. I, I need to, I think it's because I haven't put KPC in my uh, title, so now I'm just trying to put more KP. I'm just kind of abbreviating the Korean Pizza Club to KPC for the uh, discovery rate. I, I'm pretty sure you guys would um, search KPC or podcast. Yeah, but there's like this gambling site that's called KPC. So yeah, I should have done some research research behind it, but I I never really thought, uh, like I thought Korean Pizza Club was unique enough. It was a unique search um, thing, I don't know, keyword, but yeah. Yes, it's a real stream of consciousness live stream, yes. Uh, what, what does that mean? This live 
This is a hammer. Or a manchida. Uh, it's ruined. <laughs> yeah. But apple opa. Apple opa ajushi. Ajushi opa apple. Apple opa ajushi. Okay, I like that. I like that. I really like that. Apple opa David. A O D. Apple opa David. Wow, that's really nice. Korean apple opa. K O A. K A O. I like, I like that. I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, Tammy, thank you for the $20. Shout out to you, Tammy. Borahe, Borahe. Yes. Thank you so much. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Apple pizza. <laughs> Is there a thing called apple pizza? Is there a pizza with apples on top? You know, my, my, initial, my initial intention of making Korean Pizza Club, the naming of it was you can you can infer it by the uh, the slogan itself, uh, bringing Korea one slice closer to the world with extraordinary and fun toppings, which can be released as topics. Um, I, I thought pizza was a medium that's an international food that's originally Italian, but it's adopted by the U.S. and it was more well known by the U.S. but it's also crossed over to Korea and all over the world and every other place has its unique toppings and in Korea it has bulgogi, you know, um, koguma, which is sweet potato, we have shrimp, all that kind of stuff, the, the extravagant stuff. So I thought Korean pizza was like a unique thing and an international thing so it could like mumbo jumbo all that factors up and uh, basically give the gist of like it's an international podcast talking about Korean stuff, that, which is fun. So that's how it, I got to it. Um, yeah. But apple pizza, I don't know if we have apple pizza. Yes. The spam bot does not like apples. <laughs> yes, I'm obsessed with apple ajashi now. David's lost in apple names. This this live stream is going to literally be titled Korean guy talks about apples for an hour. Isn't that a top isn't that a title that sparks your curiosity? How does a guy in a empty spaced room talk about apples for an hour? But that's literally what's happening right now. We're nearing the 40 per 40 minute mark and you guys are seem to be entertained because the concurrent viewers are increasing it's like 180 now and it's it's bizarre that 180 people around the world is listening to a random korean guy with a los angeles t-shirt on talking about apples and calling himself an apple ajashi <laughs> this is so funny yeah apple pizza sounds like apple pie best with a scoop of vanilla ice cream Oh, okay. I can imagine apple pie with ice cream. I think I've had that along um, some time, some de some time. But apple pizza with vanilla ice cream, no. Yeah, we're your your my toppings. Yes, yes, yes. I forgot that for a while. You guys are toppings. You're officially toppings. But I'm kind of I'm kind of like swaying right now to change that into apples, Korean apples. Ah, oh, that's that's just so appealing to me moderator doing great job should give lessons to weavers really the moderator moderator is a bot so we're literally entering the age of ai right now and yeah ai is taking over the world yes i got i'm glad i caught the live it's 3 43 a.m says mosh pay wow where where are you at i think that's probably like europe then Let's make hashtag Apple Ajashi viral. Yes, I need to coin that before someone steals it. Is Sicily the pizza uh, is, is extravagant with toppings and cooked in outside ovens? Oh, in Sicily. Oh, I haven't been to Sicily. I want to try going there. Like, I obviously want to try uh, doing a food tour around all the regions of Italia. Yeah. Do you guys call it Italy or Italia? In Korea, we call it Italia. Yeah. I don't know why, but in the States, I know it's Italy, right? Yeah. Aren't apples super expensive in Korea? That's how this whole conversation sparked up. Like, I was in the convenience store. I showed a picture of apples, and they were literally like 5 to $6. 제목 웃긴다. The title's funny, right? <laughs> yeah. 
London, whoa, okay. It might, it might become I Pizza. Yes, AI Pizza. Have the title of this video. Korean Opa discusses apples for an hour. Yes, okay. I will actually do that. No, I don't know. I don't know. Like I, as a content creator, I need to control, like manage the views as well. I need to attract people. So right now, that seems like a fun idea. But later, I might sway. Okay, anyways, enough about apples. Like I need to actually cut this. Like for real. Like, I, I promised the, the audience today uh, the toppings in our Discord chat and my Instagram to answer some questions they've already submitted throughout the night. So, yes, I really need to get to the questions now. Okay. Whoa, why? All of a sudden, as soon as I said I need to get to the questions and stop the Apple talk, four people literally disappeared from the concurrent viewers. Oh, my God. People are actually wanting the Apple talk. What? Mm. You've gotten three commercials so far, really? Do you get in midstream commercials? I, I obviously I have the uh, the advertisement function on, but I didn't know like you get that frequently. So that, does that create like a lag or a delay in uh, the real time thing, or then you might be like in different uh, time parts with other people in the chat. I don't know how that works, but yeah. I got to monetize somehow, right? <laughs> yeah, please, please cope with, uh, be, uh, bear with that, please, yes. Oh my God, okay, I'm sorry for that you got so, m well, I guess like 40 minutes, in a, in a normal 15 minute video, you'll you'll mostly get more than three ads, yeah. Yeah, if, if the content creator has put like at least you know, but I don't put it manually, like YouTube does it for me. So av in average, like for a video over 15 minutes, you would likely get two to three ads. So I don't think that's too bad to be frank. 40 minutes, three, yeah. If it's skippable or if it's a five, five second, you know, uh, video, then I, pr I think that would be pretty okay. There is a delay, but you can catch up, okay. 30분 넘게 애플 톡 듣고 있는 시청자들. Apple should sponsor me. Apple, literally, sponsor me. Give me an iPhone. My iPhone is like an iPhone 11 or something. Yeah. But, okay, going on to Apple. No, no not the, the 사과 Apple. The, the iPhone Apple. <laughs> but this also falls into the category of uh, Apple as well, but... I, let me do a rant about iPhones and Apple. Like, I, I'm perfectly fine with my Apple iPhone. Uh, I love iPhones and I love Macs. Uh, I have nothing against it. I, I have an Apple Watch. I have. I don't have the Vision Pro, but I want. I want one actually. Uh, but the thing about iPhones are, I think everybody can agree with this. Ever since the app iPhone 10 or something, like when, it, like when people started talking about like the notch and like the three cameras, how many cameras are gonna, they're gonna be, like the island and stuff, there hasn't been any kind of innovation, honestly. And I know my friends are using already like Apple uh, iPhone 15 out there. Like, yeah, I've seen all of them. I've used them at the Apple store and stuff. So the thing is, there's no difference. Literally, there's no freaking difference. Like. You can also do iOS updates on your phone, and from iPhone 10 to 15, I think Apple is just literally pumping out new models just to get the sales because they know people go crazy over like slight adjustments and slight design changes and slight advancements, and then like maybe I should get a good new phone. It's like a new year, new me. You know, I could spare a couple thousand bucks for myself and then just buy a new iPhone. And then they're just constantly selling. It's like it's become like a, a consumable product that has a year window or something like that. I know people that really, really uh, replace their phones with a new uh, model year after year because they're like, oh, that new function is so cool. I just really need that. And from my point of view, it's just like, you know, it's pretty much the same. I don't see anything. Yeah. 
I got a super chat, but it's not appearing in the chat ninja right now. Let me wait for a while. But uh, if it doesn't appear, I'll highlight it uh, manually. Yes. Samsung is better with innovation. Apple doesn't change much. I know, right? And then the funny thing is, as I told you, like I'm an avid Apple user. All my products are Apple, but I do have to give points to Samsung that they try new stuff. They make foldable phones well, either vertical or horizontally. They try to stretch the screen. They use a, uh, like, they have like ultra zoom, which is really, uh, really, really a uh, favorite from um, K-pop fans or concert goers because they can literally like zoom right into the face of the, uh, the idols and stuff. And it has like AI models that, uh, that better the quality. Um, but yeah, and then the funny thing is, Apple imitates that after like three years, and then people start saying like, Apple is so innovative. And then it's something done by Samsung or Pixel or whatever before. Yeah, they just use the brand power and the design power to just better the existing technology and make it their own. That's, that's a pattern I've been seeing. Yeah. So I think it's the eternal debate between whether it's an Android or Galaxy versus iPhone. And I still think the percentage, the use per percentage would be like 50% is Android, 50% is Apple. Uh, that's what I've noticed, at least in Korea. I don't know how it is in your countries, but I think predominantly in the States, it would be Apple. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's an eternal debate. I wish it would maintain as an eternal debate because that means Samsung's uh, domination rate is going to stay pretty, pretty strong for a while. Uh, yes, I, and I like Samsung being successful as a Korean myself and ha as a person who has stocks, a lot of stocks in Samsung. Um, ironically, I use Apple products uh, this is a very bad example of being a shareholder. Like 101 of being a shareholder is you actually use the product, you like it, you promote it, and yeah. Bluetooth mode, lightning mode. Okay. Bluetooth mode. This uh, speaker is literally Connected. glitching. Sorry. Okay. Lightning mode. Yeah. Let me just yeah. But uh, you know Warren Buffett, which is like the uh, biggest. Uh, biggest investor, right? The success, most successful investor. He promotes what he invested in by actually bringing it to the table or his press conferences or actually uh, consuming it in public, like the Cherry Coke, Coca-Cola. Uh, I think he has a bunch of a I, uh, Apple stocks now. I think that's his biggest one in his portfolio currently. I don't know if he uses an iPhone. Probably, right? Because, you know, he has so many stocks in it. Um, yeah, but, oh, wow, <clears throat> a lot of talk about Samsung and Apple. Hmm, you have the flip phone. No, I want one, but my ecosystem is totally set with Apple now, so I can't convert. <clears throat> That's the trap of Apple. Once you start using an Apple product and you get one more, then you're done. You can't go back. <clears throat> yeah, I might get a Galaxy ad. So, might as well switch it to Galaxy. But you know how the idols do, like BTS and Blackpink. Once they get, like, uh, Samsung ads, they use Samsung phones in public, but then privately they use app iPhones. Yeah. That's been already uh, proven, I think, if I'm not wrong. Because there are certain things that you can, uh, you can, you can identify if you're whether you're an iPhone user or an, uh, a Galaxy user. Like for instance, on Instagram, whether when you share a post or something, there's a certain format or font that only appears if you're an Android user or an iPhone user. But then. Uh, the idols have made some mistakes in the past when they're still endorsed by Samsung. They, when they share the stories, it's like in an Apple format, so people are like, yeah. And, uh, but I, I think, like, 
officially, if they're if they're just careful about it officially in concerts, I've seen so many um, so many viral clips of idols actually refusing to take selfies or holding the competitor phones or brands because they're uh, brand ambassadors for the opposite. So I think there was a clip where Jenny uh, refused to hold an iPhone because they were doing Samsung promotions or something, or maybe it's flip, uh, vice versa. And uh, I've seen a viral clip of Son Heung-min, Sunny, um, actually refusing a selfie with a fan uh, because it was an iPhone as well. He was like, oh, no, no, I can't do that. And uh, he was like, the funny thing was, the, uh, uh, a female fan asked for a selfie, and she asked, oh, can you hold it for me and take a selfie? And then he was like, oh, Google not do. He said, like, no, because he can't be seen holding an iPhone. But then he said, oh, if you take the selfie, it's okay. So if the fan was, if the fan is holding out with her phone, and it's an iPhone, and it's in her, in her hand, and he's taking selfie with him, it's with her, it's okay. But he can't be seen holding it. So that's so strict. And I think that's so professional, too, because it's just a fan selfie line, you know? Like, people understand you guys are, you know, taking phones from fans and taking selfies for them. Uh, but that level of professionalism, like, you don't want to get caught in any kind of scrutiny or, uh, yeah, misunderstanding from the uh, brands and stuff. <clears throat> Okay, let me go back to the super chats. Uh, Living Sweetly, thank you. Oh, long time no see, Living Sweetly. Oh, you're my official Nuna. <laughs> Living Sweetly Nuna came to meet Korean Apple Opa. Hello, David. Your studio looks empty. What's going on? Yeah, I think people have uh, people have addressed it in the chat, but basically, I'm migrating to the new studio, so I've, I'm slowly just taking out all the stuff. So yeah. Uh, please mind the very empty background for a while. Uh, you'll be seeing a new setting soon. Hopefully next week. Yeah, I'm taking all my PCs and stuff, so trying to set up the streaming thing. Oh, that that's going to be a mess. You might not know, but like there's a webcam over here. You might have noticed the decrease in sound quality because I've already uh, put my uh, better camera in the studio over there. And I'm going to be using it for... Uh, filming because I don't have a budget to actually buy a new camera so I'm I'm utilizing all the old cameras I have I have a Canon 80D which is like from 10 years ago I have this uh, I had I have the new vlogging camera which is the Sony ZV-1 M2 uh, so those two and then I bought like a, a second-hand camcorder which is, which was like 800 bucks uh, which will do so those three the the, the video quality is gonna be like on and off like they're gonna be quite different, but I'm trying to, I'm gonna try to uh, sync them as much as I can with the post production and the color grading and whatever. So yeah, and uh, oh, I thought it was a PayPal, but it was a link. Uh, it was a alert from Coin Market Cap that Bitcoin is dropping, like hell, which I love. I'm gonna buy the dip, dip, dip. Uh, Living sweetly, thank you for the another twenty dollars super chat. Yay! In my humble opinion, Apple's weaknesses are its highly priced products, incompatibility with other software, sneaky upgrade features, and lack of innovation. At the same time, agree to disagree, I think the things you stated are exactly its advantages as well. They're double-edged swords, but it worked in in advantage to Apple's in Apple's advantage because it's highly priced products. That what's that's what makes it look for me per premium and that's what also drives up the sales and the incompatibility incompatibility with other software is what makes the ecosystem so once apple users are drip, like sup into that they can't escape that's what happened to me and the sneaky upgrade features like as much as i would argue that they don't have innovation with the the upgraded models um because they have upgrades with the old models, it, your, your iPhone 10 is still usable, and you're kind of like thankful for that because you know at least software-wise, you can still um, catch up to the latest ones. So yeah, lack of innovation. I think you know you got to give some points to Apple though because they're 
Steve Jobs was the father of innovation, and iPhone still has that innovation image because the jump from the 2G to the smartphone itself was done, introduced at least to the public by Apple itself with the keynote, the the the, the impressive, iconic keynote. You know, everybody remembers. Yeah, there were smartphones, but what really like proliferated to the public was the Steve Jobs keynote. Yeah, speech. You know what I'm talking about, right? So really it's a really it's a really interesting business model i would say yeah i think it's like a it's like a it's kind of similar to the luxury brand models but because the product and uh, price isn't that far away a lot of people can stretch a little bit more and pay a little bit more to own an iphone so that's why, like, you know, people want expensive and nicely branded stuff. And it's also pretty. I, I would argue that uh, iPhones are prettier than Galaxies. So, yeah. Okay, I think I've talked, oh, I've talked too much about Apple. Oh, it's really been an hour. So uh, let's cut this a little short, the, the Apple talk short, and let's go into the actual um, questions. So uh, let's go to my lovely Discord chat. If you haven't joined the Discord chat, I think the link is in the description below. Uh, you can search it up and join. Uh, yeah, it's, it's free, it's open. Um, Please, I, I, I do not welcome trolls in there, but um, you can talk about anything Korea related. If you need company from people around the world to talk about, there's like uh, a lot of stuff. I'll just actually show you right now. Mm -hmm. I'll just try to show you by adding, I don't know if I can do this on the spot, but uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Window capture, let's try to Oops, this is not what I wanted to show you. No, that's um, like, give me some time here. I'm, I'm not that tech savvy, so I need to figure this out. Which category does a Discord window fall into? Display capture. No, that will be showing you my whole screen. Media source, browser. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Which one would be a Discord? Please don't leave, please don't leave. <laughs> Video capture browser. Should I try, try browser? Uh, nope, this is not it either. Uh, there might be weird objects. This is why it takes so long to actually start a stream because I'm always figuring out this weird tech stuff. Media source? Uh, nope, this is another video. Um, is there no game capture? Uh, no, that's not game capture. The only thing I haven't tried yet is display capture, but then it'll be showing you my whole screen. So I'm kind of, oh yeah, see? Like I'm showing you my whole screen. So, uh, nope, that's not it. Huh, it, is there a way to show you my Discord window? Video capture, no, I tried that, audio, audio that uh, I don't think I can show you right now as of now but I think the best I can do is do a display capture and then make this like this and then yeah wow that's that's a very ugly screen so I don't want you guys to be seeing this uh, but yeah for for the time being let's try this oh no no that's too ugly let me just read then Okay, you get the point, you get the gist of it. Like there is a Discord server here. Um, you can go to Welcome and Rules, Welcome to Korean Pizza Club. There's KPC announcement, automatic uh, trigger notifications whenever I put up a video like this. There's like how many people? How many people are there in the, in there? Uh, I don't know. Like there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of people. Yeah, I, it, like the scroll goes down forever. So I think there's more than like, 200 people, maybe? Yeah, 20 online right now. We have K-pop, K-drama, K-lifestyle, off-topic introduction. 
this is the main chat. So yesterday I said, hey, everyone, another live stream in a few hours. Leave your questions here. So I'll read them right now since the, the stream looks ugly, ugly. So I'll just cancel this comeback. Um, so and I'll go to the questions. So sorry for not being able to show you the screen, but yeah. After this live is over, I'll be checking out Pidoso for some upcoming gift giving things. Yes, thank you, thank you. If you have any friends that are inter interested in Korean culture or, you know, if you want to introduce Korean culture and you don't know what to gift them, don't give them generic products from H Mart or anything or the souvenir shops that are shitty. Go to pidoso.net over here and get unique, authentic Korean products. Uh, they're really nice products even for yourself. You know, accessories, outfits, limited products from Nike, Peace Minus One, I Am Studio. We're just increasing our shelf over the days, over the weeks. So check it out. And uh, living sweetly, my dear Dongseng, nice to see you too. Nuna has been busy, but watch your broadcast here and there. In fact, I just returned from Seoul. I'll be more diligent from now on. Oh, wow, you were in Seoul. You should have uh, tried to reach, reach out to me. <laughs> Since you're my Nuna, I would have at least, you know, bought you a meal or treated you a meal or dinner or something. Oh, missed opportunity. Please let me know next time. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Share link? Okay. I'll sh try to share the link in the chat. So, uh, 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 yes, I will share the Discord link in the chat. Where is it? Okay, here it is, here it is. So just wait a little bit, and let's go to the questions. Here we go, here we go. Spring Ray is coming to Seoul soon, yes. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. And now let's go back to the questions. And, uh, yes. Uh, Let's go to the questions. Yes, finally, once and for all. So on to the Discord chat. Uh, yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, Stosh asked, are street market fruits, vegetables, meats, and other cheaper or more expensive than shopping at a larger market or grocery? Oh, street market fruits. I don't think they're necessarily cheaper. I think they might be even expensive because it's very hard to compete against the market distribution chains. So it differs, it differs. But um, if you go to like the local markets that have like the big bulk size uh, apples or meat or whatever, then it might, then you might have a chance of being uh, buying it cheaper. But if you're talking about like the street straw, street stalls in uh, a neighborhood or something, they have to sell it in a higher price because they need a bigger margin and they uh, achieve the products in a smaller. Um, smaller amount so I think it would be uh, more cheaper in marts yeah or groceries um, Sarah asked what do you think about Super Junior's DNE song problem oh I don't I haven't I haven't um, seen that myself so I need to uh, go into that first sorry I'll get back to that once I get it Get the knowledge about it. Courtney asks, is taking transit and bus subway faster than driving a car? Is getting a license difficult or do people not get a license because it's too expensive to buy a car? Uh, no, getting a license is easy. I think everybody gets a license after they uh, graduate high school. That's what I did too. You got nothing better to do uh, during that phase between um, high school graduation and college or you know, just adult life. So everybody just gets a license. It's pretty easy. Um, and uh, taking transit, public transportation is faster than driving a car. Sometimes, yes. Uh, in Seoul, I would say yes. Uh, subway, definitely yes. Um, bus, I don't know, because buses are affected by traffic as well. But they have their independent lanes, so it might be faster. But normally, when I'm just going to a place within Seoul, I would take public transportation because that's faster. But if you're going to like restaurants or um, places that are in alleyways or maybe some of like the expensive areas that have valet parking and stuff, 
taking a car would be recommended because those places are intentionally located in places that are not accessible to uh, like near public transportation because people with cars come and they have LA parking so it, it depends on the case but if you're going outside of Seoul definitely you need a car public transportation is too hard for that but uh, within Seoul and in the big cities subways and buses are definitely better yeah mm -hmm. taking the bus in Korea is like taking a roller coaster I've heard a lot of reviews from foreigners saying that the bus drivers here are too aggressive I don't know I've, I maybe I'm just too used to it like I've never had a problem but sometimes I like you know it sways back and forth but yeah Samsung's market share in Korea 66 percent Wow I would I would have reckoned it's higher since we're the uh, we're the home place of Samsung but okay interesting okay next question from Michael what is the one thing you absolutely love about living in Korea I've, I've answered this a lot of times but it's just definitely the convenience like the public transportation you, everything's nearby the supermarkets uh, the relatively low ch uh, living cost the entertainment uh, yeah everything everything's open till night um, you can get delivery 24 7 mm, four seasons uh, people mind their own businesses in public but they can be nosy online and about gossip and stuff extra nosy um, yeah I think though I think convenience is definitely the thing I love about living in Korea I think whenever I go abroad like visiting other countries I get you know mesmerized about the landscape the scenery the different vibes the exotic feels and stuff but that only lasts for maybe three days after four days I miss Korea because you know it's it's just so hard to get things done in other countries no subjects I saw some news about uh, from Asinet news about yellow dust covering Seoul is that usually happening there what exactly is that yellow dust is that the reason spring is not really like there yeah, so uh, I've talked about this uh, before as well, but the yellow dust comes from China. Uh, it's like a it's like a geographical thing. They have like wide plains, and there's just like a lot of a lot of yellow dust coming from there. Um, yeah, it travels to Korea. We can't do anything about it, so it usually occurs during springtime, and we wear masks. It's kind of stuffy. We don't like it. It goes in our eyes and makes headaches. Uh, but mixed with that, I think the bigger problem is uh, fine dust, and this is not nature made. This is uh, artificial dust uh, made by factories fuming all those pollutants in the air. Uh, and because they're located near the east coast, the, the the west coastline of China, it just all travels to Korea without any filter, and because we're so close, so um, that's becoming a bigger problem. So. Yellow dust has been like a thing for for centuries and ages from the beginning of Earth, I think. But the fine dust is definitely a problem we need to solve. But we don't have the diplomatic power or anything to do anything against it. So I think there needs to be some kind of scientific advance to try to make artificial rain during the season or something to better our lives. Because, yeah, honestly, it's getting too much sometimes okay next question from D or maybe I'm just seeing a shortened version of your name no it's from D what are the top five do's and do nots while visiting Seoul South Korea it's just South Korea five do's mm, I would say Try drinking the night away because that's one thing. Go to one of those like uh, little stalls and sip, sip, sip on soju, bottles of soju, get wasted. You know, you can do that once in a lifetime. Yeah. 
Uh, I know it's not healthy, but the alcoholism, the the noisy atmosphere, and like the speakers booming, young people just you know getting drunk, that kind of thing you can't experience anywhere else. You know, like I'm talking until like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. I'm not talking about like that boring 2 a.m. and the bar closes stuff in other countries. Yeah, literally go bar hopping, club hopping. That's that's a unique thing I think you can do only in Korea and get the get the vibes for the K-drama vibes, get wasted. But be careful. Always have a friend with you, someone to watch over you and always have your contact or um, accommodation address so you can show it to the taxi driver, something like that. Have a safety line. Uh, that's one thing I would recommend. Another thing would be... Hmm. Uh, go go uh, on a food frenzy. Yeah, try all the food you can, especially bunsiks like tteokbokki, hot dog, uh, odeng, sunde, twigim, all that kind of stuff. Go for like the fusion food with uh, Korean. Go for fine dining, uh, Korean fine dining. Get the hanjongsik with like the twelve banchans and all that. That's definitely one thing to do. I think the third thing is definitely go to cultural places, traditional palaces, uh, royal palaces. Um, that's definitely something to do. Uh, another thing is, I think, is just to enjoy the chill vibes near Han River. Um, yeah, because that's something, like it's, it's similar to going to Central Park in New York, or I don't know, like, it's you can feel the, the the chill vibes within the vast city and I think that gives you some kind of vibe watch the sunset over there watch the couples on the picnics and uh, yeah last one I did four right I don't know did I try to bicycle in the Han River that's included there I, did I do three or four uh, the last one would be I think try to explore the alleys and go into like the hole in the wall places, small little stores with cute accessories and uh, products, uh, like their yeah cards and stuff. The, that's the that's the fun of uh, exploring new places. Like just don't wander around big places like Gangnam, Hongdae, uh, yeah that kind of stuff. It's of course, if it's your first time in Korea, like do the check those lists out first, but then try to go to like lesser known places and just explore how the locals live. You know, I would recommend that kind of stuff. Oh, and as Gwenchana says, try to stay in a hano. Yeah, that's that's an experience too. Korean traditional style hano. Gyeongju is a really nice place. Would really re recommend as well. Yeah. You should try starting your own travel company. <laughs> Actually, I got a message from Trova Trip um, twice now, but I haven't responded because uh, I'm sorry if the managers may be watching this, but I've heard negative stuff from Anna mostly, and I've grown a reluctance in the brand itself. I, maybe I need to have an open mind and dig into the company and its services, but. Uh, Anna's always been so firm about like, oh, it's such a, you know, shady thing, so, yeah. Hey, Tom, I second the Han River vibes, exactly. Go with your, um, you know, turn your MP3 on, <laughs> MP3, uh, plug your earphones on, AirPods on, uh, enjoy the sunset, just stroll, look at the water, bicycle, um, yeah, go to the convenience store, get one of those ramens you can boil on spot. Yeah, that those are the vibes. Those are the vibes I'm talking about. Order some chicken. Yeah. Uh, apple mukbang says Asinia. Yeah, I'll try to do it next time. Mm. Also sports. Oh, LA Dodgers and Team Korea had a match day. I tried to watch. Oh, yeah. The Dodgers are here, the, the Padres are here too. They're doing the Korea series, the MLB, you know, exhibition matches, I think. And uh, yeah, a lot of people have been interested. I'm not that interested in baseball. I just 
watch the highlights on news uh, of anything related to Korean players. That's how all Koreans are. Um, I'm not that interested in football either, but I follow the EPL and Sonny on it. Uh, I know the fact that Lee Gang yesterday scored a goal in the PSG match. So stuff like that. But um, Otani coming to Korea was definitely a big, big event. A lot of people lined up in the airport and greeted him. And they were saying Gotani, G-O-A-T, Goat Hani. And uh, he revealed his wife in Korea. Um, she's like a basketball player, ex-basketball player, I think. And um, yeah, I think like regardless of your ethnicity, you know, Korea and Japan have beef, but Otani's just goat. Like even Koreans admit that. Like I don't think anybody can top Otani in baseball currently, being a pitcher and being a home runner. So yeah, like people were just there to see the superstar. People went to the Dodgers game. I think Korea lost. Um, yeah, Korea lost to a big, big difference, which was expected. Like, we're talking about the MLB here. Now, baseball, I think we can safely say America is like the world champions if they really went hard. Like, there is the ba world baseball series, but the MLB rarely drafts, like, their best of the best players. So if they brought their actual professional, like, best of the best to the world series, then, then the U.S. would just basically win the whole thing uh, year after year. But, um, yeah, yeah, what I was getting to was, like, you know, things like football, American football, and uh, other stuff. The NBA, when they call themselves world championships, it's kind of weird because, you know, the league only exists over there. I guess, like, for, ba for basketball, they can say it too, but I don't think... They do like international matches that much, other than the Olympics. So, well, basketball, I, I think it is definitely fine to say like you're the world champions because it's, it's just such a dominant thing. And maybe I do think like there's some European leagues and Asian leagues that are big into basketball as well. But the, just, just the thing is like, you know, there's not that much like inter international matches that much between countries. As for, like, European football, there's, like, the Champions League, there's the World Cup, there's, like, the Asian Cup, all that stuff, Asian League, and then they compete together as well. So it's, like, a very well-known, you know, international kind of thing. But American football, that's, like, yeah, calling them the world champions is weird because nobody else does football that much. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, but um, I, I did see some interviews from the LA Dodgers, uh, the, the manager and the, the players that Korean baseball is very interesting because of the vibes. I would definitely, oh, I would add this to your list. If you're in baseball season in Korea, while you're in Korea, definitely, definitely visit a baseball stadium. Yes, definitely. That is a one of a, one of a kind experience. Um, I can probably say I don't think any other country has this kind of culture uh, it's so so different because if you go to baseball matches in Korea first of all you have the cheerleaders that dance to k-pop and trending viral dances they are in like sexy outfits and they just cheerily non-stop until the ninth inning uh, there are special chants and songs for each player and a sit like each situations like you know um, So you got to memorize those and the fan club m updates them regularly uh, There are stuff you do against other teams. There's like rivalry. So there's like chants you do to the other teams so it's very like it's not actually about the quality of the game itself because I would say KBO, like Korean baseball, is like if you watch MLB and then watch KBO, you're going to be like, oh, this is shit baseball. But um, people don't actually go to watch the game. Of course they do, but I think what's bigger than the uh, actual pie itself is they just go as a date course or like a family outing. Like, you know, you just go eat chicken and beer, get all the food, watch the cheerleaders, dance, to, dance together, chant together, de-stress, 
Um, and even if you lose, it's a very, very fun experience. Yeah, so it's very different. I would definitely recommend. For, for Busan, the Busan team is called Lotte Giants. And their unique culture is that, of course, they're more aggressive. And um, they have special chants, like when the pitcher throws the ball to first base, they say like, ma, ma, and that, that's like a Busan saturi kind of thing. It's a dialect. So they use dialects in the, the chants as well. And they're like saying, hey, like, hey, I, I don't know how to translate ma, but that would be like, ya, yeah, the equivalent of ya yeah in, in Seoul. But ma is like a more stronger thing. And then um, when, when, a, when a person catches like a home run ball or a pop fly, uh, the people would chant like ah ju ra ah ju ra that's like give it to the child give it to the kid give it to the kid and then everybody like pressures you pressures the person to give it to the kid next to you so I know that's a culture in the MLB too but I don't think they have special chants for that but the whole stadium's like ah ju ra so you, you only have and then there's like you know special things like kiss cams or love cams stuff like that yeah so it's very very different and the Lotte Giants they give you like red plastic bags at the eighth or ninth inning so that you can wrap it up on your head like balloons and everybody's like just playing with it um and then they're like ending finale songs so we sing a song called Busan Garmigi which is like Busan Seagull and it's a song from Cho Yong Pil no I think it's no it's not it's not from Cho Yong Pil I think he did a cover but it's a song from a traditional like a a trot singer and uh, it's a trot song, but everybody re memorizes it because it's our ending song. Whether we win or whether we lose, like we sing it. And when we're losing, when we sing it, it sounds very sad. But when we win, it sounds very triumph, triumphic. Um, and yeah, so it's very, very interesting. So either go to a Lotte Giants match and sit in the Lotte Giants uh, sector. So it's divided like home team, away team. So. Yeah, usually the home team is on the first base and the away team is on the third base. Um, so yeah, if you want to really feel the Busan Lotte Giants craze, you can go to Busan Sajik Stadium where, where that's the home and then you'll feel the aggressive sentiment. But Seoul teams are a little bit more toned down. They're like a little bit more tame. The Seoul people in general are a little bit decent. So yeah. Well, that's fun. That's really fun. So uh, I would definitely recommend going to a baseball match in Korea. It's not even that expensive. Um, yeah, I think the tickets would be like for just decent seats, maybe like 30 to $50. Yeah. I went to an Angels game in Anaheim to see Otani uh, a while back. And I got to see him pitch, luckily. But they lost the game too. They lost the game... 1-0 and that was the most boring game ever so and I had to pay like 250 bucks for like the farthest seat up on the top I could barely see them my a friend Jin had an ultra zoom with the galaxy and we used that ultra zoom to close up on Otani and see him pitching yeah it sounds like a lot of fun it is really a lot of fun so definitely definitely check out Korean baseball games yes it's really really fun but don't sit on like the what do you call it, the pitchers or the outposts the 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 not always sit on the first or third base yeah put some extra money in go to the first or third base yeah don't don't go sit in the outfield yeah that's boring even if it's cheap you'll you won't feel any fun there and also depending on the weather it can get really really sunny and hot over there but yeah, if you go to some stadiums, there are literally places you can watch inside hotel rooms. They're like suites. They're like picnic zones. You can uh, grill pork belly while you're watching. <laughs> All that stuff. So very, very fun. 30 to 50, I should have gone when I was there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very cheap. If you buy it beforehand, of course, if you go buy it from scalpers and resellers then it's going to be more expensive yeah so you gotta plan it beforehand at least like i don't know i haven't been to a baseball game in years so maybe a week before or something like that 
They play like every day, yes. Every day we have games, but um, in Seoul, there's a high chance you might be able to catch a game because Seoul has two teams, the LG Twins and Tucson Bears. So they both use... No, they all, Seoul also has Kyum Heroes and uh, Nexen, uh, Kyum Heroes too. So there's the Gochok Dome, which is where the exhibition games are going on with the Dodgers right now. And there's the Chamshil Stadium where the Twins and um, Bears use. So those three teams go in rotation and use those stadiums. So I think probably there's a game every single day in Seoul, but it depends on the team. The atmosphere is very, very different with the cheering and the, the chanting culture. So I, I'm not even biased with this one. I can definitely say the Busan and Lotte Giants have the most aggressive chanting and cheering culture. So if there's a Lotte game, I would definitely definitely recommend you going to one. But the Seoul ones, like because there are a lot of people and a lot of fans, you get overwhelmed by that as well. So yeah, just go to a, a game in Chamshir Stadium and that would be fine to just feel the vibes. Uh, living sweetly, thank you again for the 20. Thank you, thank you. Experiencing the rich history of Gyeongju, the Nakwa One Festival, the majestic Chuangsan Mountain and Ullungdo Island was great. Wow, you've been to Ullungdo? Oh my god. Okay, I know about Gyeongju and the Nakwa One. They, they have like a very nice little altar over there, like a traditional palace looking thing, and they do like fireworks and it reflects on the water or something like that. Um, yeah, but Ullungdo is next to Dokdo, and you need to book a book a ship to go there, and it only goes on like um, very nice weather days. So I failed every time I wanted to go, and it's pretty far away. So you have to get out of your way to actually go there, and only like Koreans would go because it's like a very patriotic symbol of Korea. So, yeah. Well, you had the experience for sure. Uh, thank you, Live One, for the $2 pizza pizza. Do a lot of Koreans practice Sondo or Chikong? I don't know what that is. Let me look that up. Sondo or Chikong? Sondo? Chikong? What, what is that? Chikong. Hondo. Oh, oh, it's Taoism. Mm, Korean Qigong. What is Qigong? Chinese Qigong. Meditation. It's like something like Tai Chi. Mm, it's like yoga, traditional yoga. Um, I don't have much knowledge about it. If I'm the indicator, I would say it's not that popular. Even if people did it, I think it would be old people, or it would be a niche. Because I know the words, Hondo, like it's, like it's like Taoism, but because I don't know much about it, and I haven't seen people around me do it, I don't think it's that popular. Yeah. Check your super chat, David. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll check it. Maybe I missed some. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to look in the studio. Uh, the YouTube studio for Super Chats. They usually give me... Oh, sorry, I missed some. Okay, what's Aaron? Oh, sorry I missed this. This didn't pop up in my um, chat, Ninja. What's Aaron? Thank you for the $5 pizza and being a member. David, do you have a little advice for someone struggling to complete an MBA? I'm almost done. Any studying tips? Well, I have no experience in completing an MBA, like mine was just a uh, MFA, I think. That's a master's in fine arts, well, I don't know. Like mine was an MFA, so it's different. M MBA is like a business uh, degree, right? So I know that those two are drastically different, but uh, in terms of like just finishing a master's in general, I don't know if you have to take a test or write a thesis as well but I had to do both. Mm, I don't know, like, I don't know what I can say, but um, in, in, in the case of Korea and uh, masters here, I think the best tip was talk to your, to your, what do you call them? 
the, the, your seniors and ask, ask to them about advice as much as you can. Like, what did you study? What did you focus on? What kind of questions were uh, there? Like, what, how do you have to deal with this professor? What's his like preference? And talk to the professor a lot. I think that's the best thing. Like, don't be afraid of the professor because I, I, I usually had the impression that professors would be cold hearted and they're like, you know, very scary people. But once you actually open up to them, get like, you know, meetings with them and ask them for advice. Like, I'm studying on this. Uh, could you guide me in like a specific way? What should I focus on? Uh, could you like give me some feedback on the paper I'm working on? Like, do you think this subject is okay? Do you think the direction or the methodology or whatever is okay? And then they usually give you very, very uh, candid advice that can hurt at some times. I had to maybe like once scrap all my uh, research and do it again. But at the end, the professors are the ones that are grading you and, and they're evaluating you. So um, you have to do your, uh, in, in masters for my case, like I had to do my defense and stuff. So at the end, these professors are going to evaluate you and they're gonna bring out like exterior uh, professors as well and they're all like connected so yeah i think just asking about what the path like what you have to focus on to your seniors uh, getting information and getting guidance from your professors is the biggest help you can get other than that it's uh, it's a lonely fight with yourself you just need diligence you just need to just you know strap up and uh do the hard work <laughs> yeah that's all i can say and honestly, it was very hard for me because I was like juggling through YouTube and other freelance stuff and uh, grad school at the same time. But yeah, I don't know. The program might be different. I have friends that did uh, one year MBAs. Uh, some people did like night school uh, after their work and stuff. And uh, what I heard from my MBA friends were that uh, the, the latter ones like that did like the casual MBAs, they were mostly there for uh, networking. So they didn't really take the degree seriously. It was like an upgrade for their careers because they could get like better promotion deals and stuff during the negotiations if they had an MBA, better chance of like uh, leveling up. But um, they were mostly there for the networking opportunities because MBAs, a lot of people in the business field come to pursue. So like business is all about knowing people, right? Making connections. So they were like, yeah, I, I don't care. Like I'll, I'll just get a base grade and then just graduate. But the people I get to like connect there is like the real value of it. So yeah, uh, I, I hope that distantly <laughs> answered your question. Okay, going back to the questions, uh, we're, we are at the one hour and 30 mark, so I'll try to keep this short, a <laughs> bit below two hours. Yes. <sighs> always afraid of professors, right? Yeah, these people are human beings too, and I think I've always, um, yeah, whenever I've tried like to book a meeting with them, they've always been very like, you know, helpful and uh, sometimes they reach out to you first too. It's just, yeah, I, I, I feel like my colleagues who had better relationships with their professors always had better results and less stress. They're, they are always clear about what they had to do. Yeah. Oh, you work in the music industry and try to get it into licensing. You can branch out to Latin America and Asia. Wow, that's very interesting. Good luck, good luck with the program, yes. Have you ever tried Mountain Dew? Yes, of course. I like it, but I've heard Mountain Dew is notoriously the worst drink ever in terms of substance and ingredients. Okay, let's go to the next questions. Um, also, just to remind you, you can donate directly to PayPal. And it helps me a lot because YouTube doesn't take that 40% cut. And I can see your messages over here too. So if you uh, send me a message along with the PayPal, I can yeah, read it out. And I won't miss it because my phone's right next to me and I get notifications. Okay, next question. Um, 
D, again, outside of teaching English, are there any other work opportunities in SK targeted towards foreigners? Teaching English is definitely the most easiest. Um, other than that, I've heard a lot of like engineers come or like coders, developers. Uh, we need, I think every country needs a lot of them nowadays. Um, and the new like freelance work visa, the, 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 the what do you call it? The uh, a digital nomad visa. We covered that news with Anna, right? And they have like a salary cap or something. Uh, a condition so it's only for like very high position employed people and a lot of people were deceived that youtubers or self own self business people could come but that was not the case so there's a hurdle over there but I don't think there's a lot of um, abundance of opportunities in South Korea for foreigners we are a small country after all and there's only like so much people are offered in the job market. Like Koreans are even con like struggling to get jobs over here. So yeah, mm. I think developers, English teachers uh, are basically it. I've heard some jobs about being like liaisons for uh, big companies. Um, other than that, not much, not much. Maybe it's just like modeling. I've heard a lot of people do modeling visas. Uh, but then you'll have to have, have a model built frame too, right? So that's hard to, and the pay is very up and down. It's very like volatile. Sometimes you get jobs, sometimes you don't. The comp competition is also very high too. You have to be very young, very tall, skinny. Uh, yeah, other than that, Foreigners, mm, not much, not much. There is talk, th this is hypothetical and this isn't on the table yet, but because of the doctor strike right now, it's been going on forever, uh, over a month, and it's at a dead end, no side. Like even the government, either the government and the doctors are not backing up, they're both pushing their agendas. And the doctors have all resigned, even the professors have resigned now. Uh, from Seoul and Yonsei University. So there are literally no doctors left for um, crucial patients out there. And that's becoming a problem. Uh, the public is really, really criticizing the doctors because they took their oath, but now they're putting their agendas over it. Uh, I don't want to be one-sided, but that's how the public sentiment is. Uh, the government, it's like, you know, if it's now or never, we, if we don't push this through and we fall back this time, then there's never going to be any kind of revolution or change in the medical system. So the government's like, we're, we're pushing this, we're going to increase 2,000 doctors anyways, uh, you can do whatever you want, but we will suspend and even terminate your doctor licenses. So they're actually suspending, giving out notices of, notice of sus suspension uh, as a first start. And people have been receiving that. So um, yeah, it's really, 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 you know, they're on a cliff. And I think they're doing a chicken game now. And because this has been dragging on too long, it's been affecting the actual patients as well. So there's been a serious bottleneck in uh, hospitals and people aren't getting the care they need while they are um, paying their health care fees, right? So now I see the public slightly criticizing the government as well because, you know, they don't have any kind of backup plan to uh, normalize the medical absence vacancy. So, yeah, it's, it's just the whole shit show right now and I don't know where it's gonna be and and now people that's why that's where I was going to now people are like we need to open the medical market here so that doctors from abroad can come and practice we need to uh, yeah we need to allow that to make a law pass a bill that foreign doctors can come here and operate as well um, so that's on the table I don't think it's going to happen, likely, but 
yeah, it's just related to this talk. Um, who knows what's gonna happen, but yeah, I'm on neither side. I'm, I'm just like spectating now. I, I don't I don't have that much expertise to uh, take sides on this one. So the doctors have a point too. The people have a point too. The government has a point too. We need to find a middle ground, but nobody seems to be backing up. Mm. Yeah, but I've heard um, there's an interesting thing. I've heard that rich people in Korea, rich students from rich families, you know how doctors are a prestigious job and they earn a lot, right? Um, so because it's e extremely hard to go to med school in Korea and graduate as well, there's a low, uh, low cap as well. I've heard a lot of rich people go to Hungary. I don't know why it's specifically Hungary, but they go to Hungary or Mongolia or uh, Uzbekistan. So we call it Hongju Mong. I think I, I'm pretty sure it's Hungary, Uzbekistan, and Mongolia. So I, I think it's mostly Hungary. And a lot of rich students go to Hungary and there's med school over there. And I've heard that the bar to get into these med schools in those countries are very low. Uh, if you just pay the fee, the admission fees, and if you just do like the baseline work, you know, just graduate, you get a doctor's license in those countries. So these people who have the money to live abroad and just, you know, have basic studying skills, go there and graduate, and they come back with the doctor licenses to Korea and apparently you can practice uh, uh, being a doctor um, in Korea if you have those licenses. So I don't know what they're talking about, like opening borders. But anyways, maybe it's about eth ethnicity or citizenship. But um, these, these people get those foreign licenses and apparently there's like a class, uh, class division dividing between like domestic doctor licenses and the foreign licenses. So domestic doctors who have gone through like traditional med school in Korea look down upon those people who have like the uh, licenses from those countries. I, I, I don't know much about it, but I've seen so many posts and community posts about it, talking about like how easy it is to get licenses over there. And that's like a loophole. Yeah, so it's it's weird. I need to do more research on it, but there's something like that. Yeah, just telling you guys. Living sweetly, thank you again. Wow, it's a red super chat. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Let me actually try to make this bigger so that you guys can see full fully. Oh no. That's not how you do it. So is it there? No. Oops, I just want to make this. Oh, you need to toggle the whole thing. I'm sorry. Uh, I think I need to just increase the height. Oh, that wasn't enough. Let me try it again. <laughs> Wait. Perfect, perfect. Okay, there we go. Dear Dongseng, from the cobblestone streets of Seoul, where ancient history meets the modern era, to the Emerald Hills, plunging into the sea in Ulundo Island. Wow, you you're are you a novelist? The colorfulness of Busan to the beautiful people of Jeju are my most treasured experiences. Wow, cobblestone streets of Seoul. Yes, there's there's uh, those kind of streets near the palaces and stuff where ancient history meets the modern era. I think you're talking about like the Jongno and Gwangamun um, place, yeah. Around like Toksugung and stuff. The Emerald Hills plunging into the sea in Ulungdo. Wow, I need to try that myself. Colorfulness of Busan, yes. That's Gamcheon cultural village. You can see a lot of color there. Beautiful people of Jeju. Yeah, you can see like the Hanyos, the actual mermaids that go down and pick the abalone and uh, the clams and stuff shrimp, octopus, yeah, it's, it, all the places you've mentioned are truly beautiful, so you can, you should definitely, everyone watching should definitely go to the recommended places. So Living Sweetly, Nuna has some, you know, has some expertise about Korea, yes. Yokshi, 
You're my Nuna. <laughs> Beautifully put, says Trenami. Yes, Uncle Dan. Uncle Dan and Living Sweetly are the MVPs of the stream. They are my tongues and Nunas. <laughs> Poetic Living Sweetly, yes. Lots of people do that in the US. I guess you're talking about the medical licenses, right? Go to the Caribbean for med school. Yeah, I guess that's a similar like kind of uh, thing. And I got a super chat from Cameron. Thank you for the 20 pizza pizza. Thank you for everything you do, David. Your vid videos, especially the lives, provides a nice escape for me. I'm really happy that I can provide that for you. I've been watching you for a couple years. And the message continues, but my notification only provides that much. I'm going into the actual thing. And it says, PayPal, you need to really fix this. Why do you abbreviate the full messages? I, I've been watching people for, and that's it. Like, that's all I can see. I'm sorry, but yeah. It, when you're sending PayPals, you need to <laughs> shorten it, <laughs> apparently. I'm so sorry. I, I'm pretty sure I'm, there's a way to see it on PC, but I'll try to read it later. Thank you, Cameron, so much. Love you, David. Thank you. The mermaids were amazing. Yeah, we. I just call them mermaids because there's no other way to say it, but it's Haniel, Haniel. They, they're in like black scuba, do, scuba suits, scuba diving suits, and pick fresh seafood from the sea. And they, uh, my, my favorite is Jeju Ramen. You go to like this random place around this, like next to the street, driving your car, and you see the Emerald Sea, and you just park your car, and there's this street stall, and there's a grandma just sitting there, and it's, it says seafood ramen. And it's just normal ramen. It's like shin ramen or jin ramen. That's the thing you buy. But there are extra ingredients. They put like bean sprouts in it. And then if, if, if you order the seafood one, she's like, okay, wait a bit. It might take like five minutes. And then she gears up and then goes into the sea and literally picks like an octopus or a squid or something and some abalone. And then she literally chops it in front of you and then puts it in the ramen. And then you eat it. It's like, wow, this is like freshly picked seafood right in your face with the ramen is so good i'm salivating now yeah that's crazy good it's crazy good cheju is like a foodie heaven there's so many so many places hole in the wall places that have amazing food the black pork there is amazing too whoa 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 David will never answer questions. What? What question are you talking about? M, what do you mean you're invisible? I literally read all of your comments. <laughs> I think I've highlighted you like a couple times. Yeah, you have. You got to understand that the chat is like you know a, a whole block of comments in my face. So I only you know get to selectively see some. Yeah. So let me try to go back. Okay, okay, I see your I see your comment. What did you think of V's new song, Friends? Um, I've seen the thumbnail, but I was too busy to actually uh, watch it or listen to it, so I'll try to listen to it, yeah. Okay, Apple Ajashi David. Yes, I like that, I like that. Mm. Wow, says Rain, yes, that is amazing. You need a car in Jeju. Well, if you arrive in the airport, there are rent cars there's the tons of rent car companies right next to the airport. No, easy peasy, no big deal. Just go to the shuttle bus, take any bus to a rent car service, go up the counter and say like, I need a car for this many days. Uh, I'll return it by this then. And then pick your car, either it be an SUV, sports car. I like convertibles. Yeah, like in Jeju, I would recommend going the extra mile like you guys you guys have money right you guys are you guys have a usd like it's probably nothing compared to your currency like uh renting a car for a day like a normal car i usually go for the small ones when i'm on a budget so that would be like i think like 40 to 50 bucks per day but the bmw convertibles or like the mercedes convertibles with the roof like the roof uh open things those ones would be pretty pricey, like a couple, I think 100 bucks or 150 bucks per day or something like that. 
but yeah you can't just compete with the feeling having those hoods off feeling the wind and driving through the emerald seas and seeing the coastline that's like yeah that's that's different it's like the malibu drive <laughs> you know so try that try that hmm Sometimes the more you repeat, the less likely it's to be noticed. That That's true because like YouTube filters out like spam comments. So if you, if you multiply the chat might not be noticed. Do you remember where I'm from? Of course, you're from Venezuela, right? Yeah, you're a regular, of course I know. Yes, but I don't have a Korean license. International licenses would do. Yeah, there's a thing called international driving licenses. And nowadays, for Koreans, um, there is like an English version of a driving license in the back. Uh, as a default, I lost my license. I need to actually reissue it, but in a default. And usually, you need international licenses. Like, you can go to a police station and um, so apply for it, and they give you like a paper document in the form of a passport. I used to use that when I was in the States. Um, and there's like a list of countries that you it's applicable to but uh, this time when I went to California I just tried my luck and went to a rent service and then showed my flash my Korean license which had the English in the back and I just showed it and they were like okay and then they just gave me the car so yeah oh that was a disaster when I went to like the canyons and the desert myself oh my god I went off-road so I just uh, skim through like the google like what you need for an off-road trip in the deserts like death valley in california and they said you need a four-wheel drive uh get some plenty of water and maybe some um calories with chocolate or some food like maybe a hoodie like a jumper when it gets very cold in the, the night get some sunscreen on shades and i was like okay okay i'll i'll get all that i went to walmart got all that stuff and then I got my four-wheel drive SUV, went to the desert, and then, well, apparently I was misprepared because the 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 the, the wheels sunk into the soft sand, and I got stuck, and I almost died in the desert. If I had been mis uh, ill prepared, without the water and all, I wouldn't have been able to walk like 40 minutes to the highway and uh, get SOS. Uh, luckily, when I was walking through the desert, there was like a nice old couple. I still need to thank them. I, 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 I was so like in despair. I was like, oh, I'm going to die here. I'm going to die here. I'm going to be eaten up by vultures. Like a snake, a rattlesnake is going to definitely like bite me and I'm going to die. Or some, yeah, coyotes will eat me up. <laughs> I, was, I was in that state until I saw that old couple and I was so not in my right mind enough to actually thank them and get their contact. Yeah, and then I just got their help and then say, said thank you, thank you, thank you, and then sent them away. So I'm, I'm so sorry to them, but yeah, that's what happened. Like they were in like this gi these gigantic, you know, four wheels, like the, the escalated ones, uh, like a GMC truck or something like that. And they, they have like a cable and they pulled, pulled my car out. So thank God, thank God. That was like, wow, I almost died. But um, that was an experience. Um, use the super chat function. Don't spam the question. Yes, yes. And you can send PayPal as well. <laughs> Queen of Tears is amazing. I think it's the best drama in a while. Definitely recommend. I need to buy stocks of that company. Wait, let me just check how much the stocks are. Let's see, let's see. Oh, it's not doing good, but okay, I'll 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 buy the dip then. Yeah. Okay. Uh going to the next questions. Let me just go through them really quickly and I got a schedule at 3, so I need to end this in a while I need to get lunch too and assemble all these things and take them into my car so yeah parking is very expensive too so that's on a timer too uh, 
Is there is it difficult keeping up with all the trends in Korea? It seems there's a new one every week. If you want to keep up with trends, it's difficult, I'm sure. Like if you're a content creator or if you're like a Gen Z person who's really trend savvy and fashion savvy, then I think it would be pretty hard because you need to follow like the celebrities or the TikToks and stuff. But as a normal person, do people actually follow trends? I don't think so. So yeah, and and eventually just hits you uh, by the mass media too. So like the slick back challenge, you know, once it's on TV, you know it's stale already. But um, yeah, like some kind of shoes or some kind of look. Yeah, I don't think it's that hard. Okay, I've always wondered if there are any Korean cartoons that are popular like Spongebob or Tom and Jerry. I know one is Anpan Man, but that's uh, Japanese. But I always wondered about other famous Korean cartoon characters. Um... Huh. Shinchang is very popular too, but that's Japanese too. But Japanese, Japan is the home of cartoon and anime, so that's the reason. We almost like imported all of their stuff. But there were some, there were some popular ones in the old days. I don't think anybody watches them now. But like, Mazinga Z, I think that's Japanese too. Maybe I, I'm not sure, like the origin. Or Taekwondo V, that's definitely Korean. It's like a robot that does Taekwondo. And there's a rumor that there's actually a robot underneath the National Assembly, and there's a bunker for nuclear war and stuff over there, which is pretty. I think the bunker thing is true, but the <laughs> robot thing is bullshit. Uh, it is bullshit. Um, there's also a cartoon called Gumjong Gumushin. It's like black rubber shoe, which our parent or grandparents used to uh, wear at school. So that that one's pretty famous. Uh, other than that, no. Doraemon is very famous too, but that's also Japanese. So a lot of stuff was imported by by Japan. Yeah, and we had SpongeBob, Tom and Jerry. Uh, Mickey Mouse, all that on TV. So a lot of cartoons were imported, yes. And Asina talked about Baby Shark. So I, if you can count that as a cartoon, like not an animation, or I don't know, the the lines are very blurry. But Baby Shark is definitely Korean. We have Ping Pong, we have Tayo Bus. Um, all those are Korean made. So yeah, I think Baby Shark was the most viewed video on YouTube now. So that definitely blew up. I think internationally it's very popular. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, okay. I think I've pretty much covered a lot of the questions on Discord. And a lot of new people entered the chat. So, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome everybody. And let me go to the Instagram comments and try to answer them. And uh, yeah, that will be the end of the stream for today. So Instagram, Instagram, if you don't follow me, go to justdavid underscore 92. And you can see my stories and I do like notifications and uh, surveys over there. So wow, there are a lot. I, I don't think I can go through all of them, but I'll just do one per person. Native wolves, thank you. Has cherry blossom bloomed? No, not yet. It's not winter wonderland, but we're in the limbo phase. Uh, you'll see them in a few weeks, cherry blossoms, yes. What would it take for S South Korea to change their attitudes towards money or elitism? Uh, time. We need to mature. I think we're in that phase. People are getting more... No, maybe actually not. Maybe the economy is pushing it more towards money and elitism. I don't know. Uh, we, we have a very bali bali culture, like fast, fast results. We, we want that. We want fast growth. We want like fast money. Uh, we want to always be at the top. It's it's kind of interesting if you think about it. Like a country with the 50 million population, um, now 48 million or something like that. And if you think of the percentage of adults, like put that into half, like 24 million population, excelling in a lot of fields like entertainment, technology, sports. I, I don't know, I think it's just the grit. It's our DNA, yeah. I think it's like, Korea has historically always been invaded by neighboring countries. We've always been like the, 
the subordinate of China or Japan. Um, and we've gone through a lot of war. So, but we were traditionally very good in like dancing, um, arrows, like warfare, like, you know, we didn't go to war with other countries, but domestically we were really well at like riding horses and like all that kind of stuff. So I think that just passed on, but like the the big advent of technology, like firearms and, you know, Western technology is just coming in. We couldn't resist upon that. So we got colonized a lot. But I think among the Koreans, they always were, uh, the Koreans themselves were always pride about their innate abilities and their grit and characteristics. And as an underdog, we always had that passion to be like, prove ourselves that even though we are underdogs in terms of like, you know, population or stuff like that, um, we always wanted to prove ourselves to the world. So that's why in competitive fields where there's like a leveled balance, there's like equality, like sports, we're always like, you know, we can win this, we can top this. If this, if this is a equal playground, you know, if this is not about like money or tanks or airplanes or, you know, population, yeah, we can do this. So I think there was always a grit and mentality over that. Um, would you consider being a Korean ambassador abroad? Yeah, I consider myself as a cult cultural, digital cultural ambassador online, yeah. I take pride in it. Like this looks like a simple live stream, but if you actually go to the roots of it, I'm trying to give you more information and cultural background about Korea. So I do think of myself as somewhat a cultural ambassador in, a, in the, just the private yeah, fields. How can I visit Korea? Book a plane and come. <laughs> uh, have you been watching I Love You? No. Mm, sorry about that. Do Korean men use cologne? What is the most used cologne for men in South Korea? Uh, young people do because they just want to impress. Mm, but as you might know, Koreans and Northeast Asians uh, do not need cologne or deodorants because we don't have body odor. We don't have those chemicals in our bodies. So even though we sweat, there's a slight smell, but it's not that bad. Um, but we do, cl we, we do clean ourselves very often. Uh, every day. I've heard in some countries like people take showers in every like three days or a week. That's crazy to, to me. Um, sometimes I take even two showers a day. Uh, but for cologne, I don't think there's like a specific brand that is the most famous, but uh, the most famous brand for maybe giving gifts is maybe Jo Malone. I've just heard of that a lot. Yeah, Jo Malone. Yeah. I don't know why, but that's one of the brands that pops up in my mind right now. Uh, which provinces has the most amount of people other than Seoul and Busan? Probably Gyeonggi. Gyeonggi probably has the most because it's a wide residence belt around Seoul. Yeah. Which province in Korea do most rich people live in? Seoul. Yeah. What do Koreans think about Asian Americans versus non-Asian Americans? Uh, we don't have anything like stereotypical about Asian Americans other than they might be very different in mindsets with us. They're very Americanized and very open-minded, um, good at English, maybe might have more opportunities. Uh, they don't really follow our uh, traditional customs in like work settings or something, something like that. They might be clumsy in some sort of ways, but that's okay because their roots are, uh, oh wait, we're talking about Asian Americans, not American, Korean Americans. Asian Americans, like if we're talking about like Chinese or Japanese, or like if you extend Asia to like India um, or Southeast Asia, I don't know. Um, I don't think, I think we all, if it's Asian Americans versus non-Asian Americans, if we're talking about Indians versus Indian Americans, like Philippines versus Philippine Americans, Filipino Americans, Indonesia, Indonesian Americans. 
I think Koreans would just see them as the same. You know, if, if we don't have the opportunity to actually interact with the person in, the, in an intimate level, we would assume that they are just foreigners from their own countries. We, we don't have like a lens that tells you that this person is from America, right? Even if that person uses fluent English and is like maybe like Asian, some people might think it's very interesting, but because we only use Korean and any other language is a foreign language, even if the person uses fluent English, that person would just see be this uh, seen as the same as like a Southeast Asian or Indian or Japanese, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't think too fondly of us Gyopos. I don't, I don't think there's like necessarily a very big negative sentiment either though. It's just, you know, they're, they're different. They're different. Uh, we speak different languages, different cultural backgrounds, different customs. So if you're just different, then there's ought to be some kind of, you know, discrepancies and that would occur uh, as sometimes negativity. But in general, I think the younger generation like Kyopos too, because I've seen a lot of like, in, in dating shows nowadays, a lot of people are Kyopos. A lot of people speak good English and a lot of people look up to them as well. And some people that have that schadenfreude of like, oh, these people were benefited, you know, they had the privilege of growing up in America or like Europe and they're probably from rich families, which is not the case sometimes. Like the first generation immigrants to America were actually very poor and they went to find like a American dream and made up like laundromats and supermarkets and stuff. I've heard about the history about that and now it's like the third generation and they're seeing no, they've generated wealth out of the diligence and the opportunity in America, and they use English to their advantage. So they might see, they might seem with the upper hand, you know. So some people, some salty people might see Kyopos as like in a negative light, but other than that, I don't think so that much. Um, Make a pot about being an English teacher in South Korea? I might if I, uh, yeah, I, I know a lot of people who have been English teachers, so I could do that. Uh, what ha why has the Korean government made it so difficult for foreigners to get a citizenship? I, I've, I've explained this before, but it's not only Korea. I, I'm telling you, like vice versa. If you think about any other country, I would even argue that Korea is on the easier side. Yeah, it's a basic procedure you need to go through for every single country. Um, you need to know their language, you need to have a job there, you need to have some kind of reason you're staying there, you might have, you might have family there, uh, you, know, you know, you have to know how to uh, accommodate to the, the, the society, you know, you have to know the customs and history. So that's just basic stuff, I think. Yeah. And I don't think Korea is that tight uh, compared to other countries as well. Like, for example, um, let's say I want a citizenship in Japan or America or the UK. I think I would reckon it would be pretty much harder, yeah, than getting one in Korea I, or in par. Uh, I do know that there are very uh, negative discussions about illegal immigrants crossing the border in America and everybody's just given a citizenship or they're just given green cards at the end if they sign up for like, you know, immigration or whatever. But that's like a political problem. But uh, in the other like standard cases, filing for an actual citizenship in all the other countries, I think it would be pretty hard too. So it's just that people, I think the reason this discourse is coming out is because a lot of people want to live in Korea nowadays because Korea has been proven to be safe, convenient, nice living society, um, and there's like high demand here, and now a lot of people are applying for that, but it's not as easy as you think. So I think that's why there's a lot of like discussions about like why is it so hard to get things here, because people are just talking about it a lot. Kyopo, Kyopo is a Korean American, yes, or a Korean 
uh, Brazilian or a Korean um, Japanese or someone who just lives abroad. U.S. citizen is e easy, is it? Give me my U.S. citizenship, please, then. <laughs> I want one. I wish I had one and didn't have to go to the military and was able to work in the U.S. and get, like, a 100, 200K salary. I was watching, like, this program, uh, Korean program yesterday, and they were introducing jobs in Silicon Valley at Google, Meta, Apple, and... Uh, one de de one developer that was working there, who, she was like twenty in her mid twenties, and she was earning like two hundred fifty k. Although she said that the living cost there and the rent is crazy, then she barely sustains and saves. But still, like if I could have an opportunity to get that money, possibly work remotely in some other place like Colorado or like even in Korea, then that would be really really nice. Um. Work-life balance in Korea? It depends. You can achieve work-life balance if you want, but there's going to be a trade-off for sure. It's, uh, it depends on what kind of value you have on life. If you want work-life balance, go get a job that get, has work-life balance. There are tons of jobs like that. Like civil workers, if you work in the, uh, the government sector, tons of work-life balance. If you become a teacher, ton of it. If you become a company worker, there it depends on company by company, but there are companies that are well known for work-life balance and good welfare, so you can choose one of those. But is there any choice nowadays? I don't know about that. The job market is pretty saturated and fierce in competition. But uh, if you go to like a really, really hustling kind of uh, job that has a lot of questions and uh, night shifts and stuff, then yeah, it's going to be difficult. But I, I don't, I've never understood people saying it's hard to achieve work-life balance because you can't have it both. You can't have the money and work-life balance at the same time. That's just idealistic. Yeah, that's, that's being greedy. Like you either hustle, you get a lot of money, or you either take it easy, chill, and get less money and just enjoy your time. So if, if there is a job that has work-life balance and earns a lot of money at the same time, that is a dream job. And probably that's very hard to achieve. I used to reckon uh, YouTube, you, being a successful YouTuber is amazing because it has good work-life balance. If you schedule it that way, um, you can achieve that. But at the same time, is it easy to become a YouTuber that has no, more than like 100K, like 1 million? That's not easy. Like if you look at the percentage, it's like 1% or something. Yeah, there's always a trade-off. Um, I know a lot of people in my circle, that my friends, that have good work-life balance. They go to Pilates, they go to um, F45, they go to like art uh, sessions, uh, they go to museums every day, you know, take care of their babies, go to golf, go golf, screen golf, and learn boxing, do whatever, yeah after work because they have plenty of time but they always complain oh my salary is too low and stuff so yeah it's really hard to get those jobs i know right do you personally consider yourself or people like you to be a kyopo no i am not classified as a kyopo a kyopo needs to be living in an abroad overseas country or at least has spent the majority of their life in that country or at least identifies themselves culturally more uh, proximate to that culture because their roots are there but in my case I lived seven years in North America I'm 32 now so what is that that's like one fourth one four to fifth of my life and ever since I've lived in Korea I've gone through elementary to college to my master's in Korea so how could I d identify myself as a Kyopo that doesn't make sense just because I speak Eng I'm just a bilingual Korean person I would say and a little bit more influenced with Western culture because I do this kind of content I meet people around me that are have tendencies to like geared towards that culture so yeah 
people that have both Korean parents but grew up in the U.S. or lived there for a year. Yeah. Mm. Okay. There's talk about a 32-hour work week. What do you think? I think that's great. I think more work hours in the office is BS. Like, I think people have the ability to focus intensively, finish all their work. Uh, honestly, sometimes I feel like I procrastinate so much, and then when the deadline hits, I got like two less than two hours. I finish my week's work in two hours. Like, sometimes that really, really happens. And that's like the, that's evidence that you have the ability to do all your tasks in limited amount of times. And yeah, if the company has, you know, well-structured task-driven and task-tracking uh, methods, then a shortened time would be better because like, you know, you work intensively, get that back, go home, enjoy your time with your family and, you know, So people thought remote work wouldn't work. Now a lot of companies still adopt it. Uh, it's very cost efficient too. Uh, people will have a lot of satisfaction with that uh, work method. Um, although companies are uh, circling back to the traditional you know, offline working model, but yeah, I think I think it could be possible. 교포분들은 부모님이랑 정서가 많이 달라서 마찰이 많은 경우도 있더라고요. Yes, uh, yeah, 교포들 have conflict with their parent generation because of difference in culture. That's true. Like about marriage, about how we view things like tattoos or jobs. You know, even in my case. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, th I think there's one layer of just in general generational clash and then there's another layer of kyopo cultural clash as well so yeah i don't have that much problem uh because my parents my dad is just very lenient he's very chill my mom tries to enforce it upon me but i just don't listen mm. <laughs> but it, it does get into my mind you know when she keeps on nagging about it constantly Okay, uh, I think I'm pretty much done. So how much have I been streaming? Okay, well, over two hours. So yeah, that's way above my <laughs> my goal. Like I wanted to end this in 40 hours, but I guess I can't do it. Yeah, I'll just sacrifice those views uh, for people who think it's too much and give up watching. But uh, yeah, as I said, I'll put chapters. I'll generate chapters for you. The chapters thingy takes a while, it, you know, you just uh, revisit after maybe 24 hours because the longer the video, it takes a while for YouTube to generate automated subtitles. The, the mechanism is YouTube generates automated subtitles, the CCs, closed captions here, after, after it processes the, the video once it's uploaded. So for longer videos, it takes a lot more time. And once it's done, I'll, I'm able to scrape those closed captions and put it into like an AI chapter generating website and then it creates chapters for me but it's not that accurate because I mix in a lot of like Korean words and the topics like jump back and forth so it's not that accurate but it's better than me going through the whole two hour stream and like manually oh I said this in that part I said that in that part so people immediately wanting chapters you got to understand it takes me at least like 30 minutes even if I'm going skimming through on 2x like skipping through and like oh yeah putting chapters over there so yeah um, I used to outsource it to our uh, viewers like one very generous viewer uh, did the job for me uh, but yeah once I discovered this automated chapter generating website I'm using it like I'm paying nine dollars per month so I think it's worth it for the convenience of our my viewers. Some people just don't want to hear about apples for an hour. They just want to get to the get to the actual meat and uh, about Korea and stuff. So I understand. Definitely understand. Enjoy some delicious lunch today. What should I have? Um, 
I have like a 30 minute window for lunch, so I, I think I'm going to get very, something very quick. But definitely with the nice support you've sent me, um, thank you again for all the PayPal's and Super Chats. That's going to be my lunch money. <laughs> and uh, I think I'll get some sushi. I know I've been craving some sushi for a while. I, I, there's this nice place I went with Anna before that has like a omakase, but it's really cheap. So, and there's miso soup that just entered the Discord chat. So miso soup is served there as well. Nine dollars is like a Starbucks trip? What? That's too expensive. In Korea, Starbucks would be like five dollars. Yeah, for a latte or something. For Americano, it'll be like three dollars. 교포 분들이랑 합방도 보고 싶네요. Yes, uh, I know a lot of 교포s. Yeah. Uh, my one of my big friends is Daniel. I think you may might have seen him in a ramen and show. Uh, no, yeah, maybe you haven't. But he he goes to Google. No, actually, yeah. No, he goes to Apple. No, he goes to Google. Yeah, he he he, he works at Google Korea. He's a 교포. He's a really big friend of me. But he's very. Uh, conscious about being on camera because of his company terms and stuff a lot of that's the restriction for a lot of people here like they really want to be on camera and on the streams or content or podcasts but it's like oh does this go against against my company contract or terms that's like a factor and he doesn't want to take the risk so yeah mm -hmm. tacos tacos are expensive Pho. Oh, I would like pho, but there I, I do not eat bad pho. Uh, there are some nice places, but normally all the places here are very Koreanized and it doesn't taste good. There is one chain I like. It's called Ban Pho 6. Ban Pho 6. It's like a chain in Korea and that pho broth kind of suits my taste. It's not bad, but I think that's a New York brand because it says New York style Vietnamese pho. So, Panpo 6 was nice. Um, other than that, the local ones, they've been disappearing a lot. Yeah, because I think, yeah, there was a fall craze for a while and then it all just vanished. Uh, now only the good places have survived. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching uh, for the whole two hours. How many people are there? I think some people might have uh, exited, but uh, still 170. Wow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a nice uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, seven days a week. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one, possibly with Anna next time. So, yeah. And before I end, what is this advertisement insert button that's been added on the studio? Can I try clicking it before I end? <laughs> if you get an ad, please tell me in the comments that you got an ad. I'll just click this and end the screen. Yeah, I didn't want to try it midstream because I was fearful that you guys might get an ad and leave. But since it's the end, I'll just try it anyways. Okay, insert ad and I'll end. Bye-bye.